Okay, so something else that is absolutely fundamental to kind of algebraic working and uh, working at, at an A-level standard is to manipulate thirds. Uh, so a third is anything uh, that contains some kind of root. So for example, here we have the square root of x, or we may have uh, the cube root of x, or indeed uh, any nth root of x uh, is referred to as a third. Um, in this video, I'll be focusing mainly on the square root, um, but uh, you, you can apply the same theory uh, to any root. Um, so, for example, let's start with something like the square root of 8. Now, 8 is not a square number, which means that this cannot be written as an integer. It is an irrational number. Uh, but we can simplify this third uh, because we can say, well, this is equal to um, 8 uh, to the half, we could say that's equal to 4 times 2 to the half, that's equal to 4 to the half times 2 to the half, um, which is root 4 times root 2. But root 4 is an integer because 4 is a square number. So we can write it as 2 root 2. So root 8 is the same as 2 root 2. And usually we would not leave a third in an unsimplified form, such as root 8. We would simplify it by taking out the highest square number that's a factor of the, uh, the contents of the third. In this case, the highest square number was 4. Uh, another example, let's have a look at the square root of um, uh, 1,000. <clears throat> well, we know that 100 goes into 1,000. And it goes into 1,000 10 times. And the reason I chose 100 is because 100 is a square number. And in fact, it's the largest square number that goes into 1,000 because we're left with 10 root 10, uh, which doesn't simplify any further. So instead of leaving something as a root 1,000, we would leave it as 10 root 10. But for argument's sake, let's say that we didn't spot the 100, first of all, and we say, well, actually, I know that 4 goes into 1,000, and it goes in 250 times. So I can write this as 2 root 250, uh, which is correct. There's nothing wrong with what I've done here. I've taken a 4 out, and that leaves 250. Um, square root them both, and then square root the 4 that gives me the 2. That is correct. However, this is not in its most simplified state yet, because square root 250 can be simplified. So I can say, well, the square root of 250, well, that's equal to the square root of 25 times the square root of 10, because 25 times 10 is 250. And 25 is a square number, so when I square root it, I'll get 5 root 10, and now I can use this definition of root 250 in here, so I'll get then that root 1000 is equal to 2 times 5 root 10, which is 10 root 10, and again we end up at our most simplified state. So it's beneficial to try and find the highest square number that goes into the contents of your third, because then that will be just the one step, but if you don't spot the highest, and you spot another one, then you can repeat the process and you still end up at the same answer, uh, provided you have done it all correctly. Um, one quick example on a cube root one then. <clears throat> uh, so let's say we are looking for the cube root of 128. Well, now we're not looking for the highest square number that goes into six, uh, 128 anymore. We're looking for the highest cube number. Now, maybe this wasn't a great example, because actually the highest cube number is equal to the highest square number. Um, so it's equal to the cube root of 64 times the cube root of 2, because 64 times 2 is 128, and 64 is a cube number. When we cube root it, we'll get 4. This is equal to 4 times the cube root of 2. And that is how we would simplify the cube root of 128. And indeed, you can take this theory further. Uh, for the nth root, we are looking for the largest um, 
uh, nth power that goes into the content of the third. Okay, and that'll help us to simplify our answers.